जाओ सबको खबर कर दो आजादी की जंग शुरू हो मंगल इस इनकलाब को तुम्हारी जरूरत है इस इनकलाब को खून की जरूरत है उसे मेरा होने दो Identify the role that Amir Khan was seen playing in the last video we just saw. Well, he played the role of Mangal Pandey. Mangal Pandey was a soldier in the Bengal Regiment of the British Indian Army. But why are we suddenly talking about Mangal Pandey? In the clip we just watched, we heard he said that Azadi ke jang shuru. which means that the war for freedom and independence has begun well mangal pande was among the first to rise up in rebellion against the east india company which eventually laid the way to the great revolt of 1857 now the great revolt of 1857 was a watershed moment in the history of indian politics This is because this was a war fought by the Indian masses against the East India Company's oppressive rule and policies. Well, we should also know that the Great Revolt of 1857 was known as the First War of Independence. Now, why do you think was it called the First War of Independence? For this we will have to take into account the history of the East India Company's rule in the Indian subcontinent. Now the East India Company had come to the Indian subcontinent initially as trader but over time it gained power over the subcontinent. The masses were seething in anger and protest against the East India Company's rule. This is because people from all the sections of the society were being affected by the east india company's rule the existing social order was being supplanted by new social orders by new policies and reforms which were being implemented by the east india company the masses saw this as a curtailment of their freedom and independence which is why they broke out in rebellion against the east india company and this rebellion came to be known as the first war of independence now the first war of independence witnessed the support from all the sections of the society the zamindars the rulers of various indian states and kingdoms the peasants artisans workers commoners everyone joined hands to fight against the east india company's rule now during this time the great revolt of 1857 happened greatly in the northern and central parts of the indian subcontinent but if we are to take into account any rebellion or any event in history it is imperative on our part to see the back story because it is not possible for any person or any group of people to suddenly break out in rebellion there must be a whole host of factors that contribute to a rebellion well in this lesson we will try to trace the various events and the various policies that were implemented by the east india company which in turn led the masses to break out into the great revolt of 1857 so let us now begin this very interesting discussion on the great revolt of 1857 but before proceeding with this lesson let me ask you a question the great revolt of 1857 is also known as the first war of independence do you think this statement is true or false well this statement is true because just a while ago we learned that the indian masses were seething in anger and rebellion against the east india company's rule 
The East India Company that was ruling the Indian subcontinent curtailed the freedom and autonomy of the Indian masses, which is why they now broke out in rebellion against the company's rule, which is why the Great Revolt of 1857 is also known as the First War of Independence. Now let us begin tracing the history of the East India Company's rule in the Indian subcontinent. We begin with the year 1608. It was in the year 1608 that the East India Company or to be very specific the British East India Company had arrived at the port of Surat which lies in the present day Indian state of Gujarat. Now the East India Company initially came to the Indian subcontinent as a trading company because the Indian subcontinent enticed various European companies because of its huge amounts of resources. So the East India Company was no exception. It came in the year 1608 to trade with the subcontinent. But after it had established itself in the subcontinent, the East India Company now realized that it was no longer willing to stay only as a trading company. It now wanted to gain power and authority over the masses and the lands of the subcontinent. Well, when we talk about the history of the East India Company in the Indian subcontinent, the year 1757 would be very crucial. Why do you think it is so? Because it is in this year that the Battle of Plassey was fought. Prior to the Battle of Plassey, the East India Company was restricted to being only a trading company in the subcontinent. But after this battle of Plassey that was fought in the year 1757, the East India Company now started assuming power over the land. So from being trader, it was now in the process of being a ruler in the land. And when the East India Company was firmly establishing itself in the Indian subcontinent, the Indian masses were losing their autonomy and independence. Because all the East India Company wanted to do was gain power. It was wanting to gain ultimate authority over the land and it was in no way willing to let the Indian rulers, Zamindars, Talukdars have their own say and autonomy. So this was a major transition that happened in the course when the East India Company had come to the Indian subcontinent. Now, after the Battle of Plassey, the East India Company now started implementing many reforms and policies to colonize the land. But a very important thing that we need to keep in our minds is that the East India Company was here to maximize its profit. It was wanting to drain all the resources from the subcontinent so that it can carry back as much as possible to Britain. And in this way, India's resources, wealth and everything were being drained. So, the East India Company was now implementing many revenue systems and all these revenue systems were meant for the maximization of its profit. So, now we will be tracing this century that is from 1757 to 1857 and briefly learn about the things that contributed to the revolt of 1857. Just a while ago we mentioned this very crucial point that British policies and laws adversely affected several sections of the society. Here we see the rulers of Indian states. Well, the rulers of Indian states were losing their autonomy when the East India Company gained its power and authority over the lands and the people. So, these people as in the rulers of various Indian states were severely affected by the company's rule. Then we come to the traders. Well, the East India Company had come to the Indian subcontinent as traders as we just mentioned and it wanted to control the trades that were happening in the land. 
and so the native traders who were performing various kinds of trade activities in the subcontinent were no longer being able to do so because trade was now under the control and power of the East India Company so these traders were also affected then we come to the peasants well peasants have always been the ones who are severely affected and the worst hit of any rebellion of any calamity and this was no exception in this time as well because the Indian peasants were forced to grow only those crops that the East India Company wanted to be produced in the subcontinent. And so the peasants were severely affected by this. And at the same time, the British policies and laws also introduced many taxes. So these peasants who are already very poor were having to pay very high taxes so as to contribute to the revenue of the company. And in turn, these people were affected by the company's rule. Then we come to the artisans. Well, these artisans were no longer able to produce the goods that they have been doing for many centuries because these artisans were no longer able to produce goods which they wanted to do. They were also under the control and diktat of the East India Company. And last but not the least, we see the Zamindars here. Now, the Zamindars have hereditarily enjoyed power over the lands in the subcontinent. And as the East India Company became a ruler over the subcontinent, these people also lost their traditional access and rights over the lands which is why all these sections of the society were being affected by the company's rule. All these people's lives were put to jeopardy by the British East India Company, so to speak. But prior to the year 1857, the Indian masses were breaking out in very local rebellions and movements. The East India Company witnessed many local movements and uprisings by the peasants. At the same time, the Zamindars were also revolting. The rulers were revolting against the company's rule. But a very important point that we need to keep in our minds is that all these revolts and uprisings were very local in nature. These revolts did not happen on a national scale, which is why it was easier for the Britishers to suppress all these revolts and uprisings. So, in the century between 1757 and 1857, the Indian subcontinent was rife with various kinds of struggles and uprisings, but all these were local in nature as we just mentioned. But we should not dismiss the power that all these uprisings and rebellions have had simply because the great revolt of 1857 was a culmination of these preceding attempts. So all this while these people were fighting in very local pockets, these were very regional in nature. But now all the masses started coming together and they broke out in rebellion which took the shape of the great revolt of 1857. Now all this while the points we mentioned were a brief introduction to the great revolt of 1857. But as students of history we should delve into the various events in great detail so as to understand what happened before the great revolt of 1857. Our subsequent lessons will be devoted to tracing and understanding the various events that culminated in the Great Revolt of 1857 and we will also discuss the course that this first war of independence took over time. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads.
So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.